Hello everyone and welcome to Victoria's Cantina. Today we're having a look at the Safari Mew for 2017 Diplodocus. This dinosaur is available at Dan's Dinosaurs. For the latest and greatest in dinosaur and prehistoric collectibles, visit Dan's Dinosaurs. So this is another one of those that Safari has released for 2017 that I saw in photos and just absolutely had to have, despite the fact that I'm not a regular Safari purchaser. Uh, you know, we do a re rebore here on the channel. We review Papo and of course, Jurassic Park, Jurassic World. Safari is kind of a new venture for me. So I'm really excited about what we've seen with the feathered T-Rex. And I anticipate that the Diplodocus is gonna be just as great. Uh, as you can see from the packaging, it comes in a plastic wrapping. It's completely sealed on all ends. And it has a little tag that basically just gives you some information about the product. And uh, Safari tag is in there somewhere. I guess we'll need to open it up to get a closer look. So let me go ahead and get to it. And then we'll take a closer look at the Diplodocus. All right, you guys, now here is the Diplodocus out of the packaging. And wow, <laughs> um, what really drew me to this figure when I first saw it was the coloration. I love this color. I mean, it's basically like a teal blue and the underbelly is like a really light shade of blue. That just really looks catchy to me. So that's what I really was drawn to when I first saw pictures of this. Um, but having it here in hand, I really appreciate it a lot more because now I can also see the texture on it and the detail, and that's really nice. And of course, this is a very long figure. We'll do measurements and comparisons and all that in just a little bit. Um, but just looking at it right here, it looks fantastic. I really like the sculpt of this dinosaur. You can see that it's basically just strolling along, living its life, and having a ball. I suppose, at least that's what I hope is going on. Hopefully it's not being chased by Allosaurus or anything that might take it down or take down one of its children. But, but let's not get too morbid. Let's just assume that this is a regular Diplodocus just going about his day. Uh, but truly, this is a very nice sculpt. It's a very long sculpt, but it's also a very narrow one. It's not a hulking, oversized sauropod dinosaur. And that's great. I like seeing that this has different proportions portions than what we normally see on sauropod dinosaur models. Diplodocus, of course, had a very, very long tail, being one of the longest dinosaurs at about 90 feet in length. And uh, Safari seems to have really captured how this would have been a really long animal. It's crazy. When you have this in hand, you really get an appreciation for how long it is. It's really hard to work with on camera, as you might imagine, given the length of this dinosaur. Close up of the head, and it looks good. It's a very tiny, tiny, tiny head. I mean, what we're looking at here for the head probably isn't more than about half an inch or so, but it is very nice. I mean, there's a lot of a very fine, very delicate sculpting in here, considering the size of the head. And it looks very much like a sauropod dinosaur. I mean, it looks like a diplodocus. If you've seen the skull of the animal, they seem to have gotten that correct. Got a little bit of a bony ridge above the eye. The eye itself is tiny. Uh, it's black, but you can also see there's a little white dot in there. And uh, the teeth are very nicely shaped. It's even got some pink inside the mouth to, you know, just let you know that this guy is a, has a tongue. He is alive or she. For some reason, I always think of sauropods as being female. I, I really don't know why that is. Uh, from the other side here, it's just a really nice head sculpt. It's not the main thing you see when you look at this because of how small it is compared to the rest of the animal. But, uh, you know, Safari did do a good job. They did a really nice job uh, when creating that head sculpt. So it does look quite great. It, it truly, truly does. Now as for the rest of the dinosaur, look at the neck. Uh, you can see that it's not just like a flat sculpt. Uh, they did give it some texture, some dimension, you know, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. And um, I mean, that is that is plainly visible on the animal when you have it in hand. You don't so much see that in photos of it, but now that I'm holding it, you know, getting to feel it and see it, there definitely is some really nice texture work going in there. Really nice, fine sculpting and details. Uh, there's the underbelly. I think it looks really nice. I really like how they approach this specific uh, animal. And again, that paint looks really nice. Initially, I was kind of afraid that it was going to look too stenciled on, but having it here in hand, uh, it's not too bad. It actually looks fairly organic, and I, I like the way that this looks again i love this coloration that shade of blue to me is just so so pretty and um it looks great i mean you really see all of those nice little details here in the skin and uh, even you can feel that when you you know just rub it. it has a little bit of a rough sort of feel too it's not perfectly smooth as you might think when you look at it from a distance so 
Uh, that's really great. Uh, the legs look nice, very nice detailed. I really like the way that this leg looks. Doesn't it look really graceful? And, um, it, you know, it just kind of like it's walking along. I mean, it looks lifelike. It looks alive. It says 0816 on the foot back here. I assume maybe that's when they actually made the specific sample. Um, but looking at those uh, limbs, they are very nice. They are very nice. It's got the one uh, thumb claw there and then uh, claws on the back feet. So again, it is very accurate to real life. And again, just that texturing on there. It's very fine, very delicate, but it looks great. The tail is, it's a rigid plastic, but you can obviously move it a little bit. Um, you wouldn't want to have it full length though, because then it would be way too long. Where would you put it? So, um, you know, it's just a really nice looking piece. And I know I keep saying that, but it, I mean, it, I really like what I'm seeing here. Uh, again, look how, how narrow it is. It, it's not wide, like, you know, you often see with sauropods. It, it's very narrow but it does have that length. So it's just really interesting the way that they approached it. And I like it. I mean, it feels fresh. Uh, it's a, it's a new take on a Diplodocus, one that we haven't seen before. And that makes me really happy to see. Uh, one of the defining features of this version as well is that you get all of these little bumps going along the back. You can see they're a little shorter here at the neck. And then as you get down farther, they get a little bit bigger, a little taller. And then, you know, smaller once again as you get down the tail. And this is another thing that initially I didn't know how I was going to feel about that. I mean, as, a, as an aesthetic choice. But, you know, having it in hand, I'm actually really happy with the way that that looks. It really adds a little bit of extra pizzazz to the figure. And that's great to see. Here is our Diplodocus along with the Papo of Patasaurus. Now, obviously they're not the same species, but this is actually my very first Diplodocus that I've owned. So uh, the closest I have is this Apatosaurus. Now, Papo's interpretation of this Apatosaurus, which we did review a couple years back, is a very interesting one because it's very chunky. I mean, it's got a really big neck and, you know, the legs look a little strange. So I'm not completely on board with that. I mean, it does look very realistic. It does have a realism that the Safari version does not have, especially in terms of sculpt and coloration. But to me, it just seems to be a little bit overdone and just not quite done the right way. I mean, it, it just seems a little bit impractical to me looking at it. When I look at the Safari version, it has more of a practicality to it and it just looks more accurate to me in terms of the proportions. Okay, so now for the size. Uh, for the height, at the very top of the neck, you're looking at about 5 inches. For the length of the Diplodocus, it looks like it's going to be about 18 inches. And then for the width of the animal at its widest point, uh, we're at about an inch and 3 quarters. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. This is the Safari, new for 2017 Diplodocus. All in all, you guys, I absolutely love this figure. I absolutely love it. It's my very first Diplodocus in my collection. And you know what? It may very well be my favorite sauropod between the two Papo ones that I have, the Apatosaurus and the Brachiosaurus. I mean, this just looks a lot more feasible to me. It's got great dimensions. It's a graceful looking piece. I love the way that they positioned its legs. And I mean, it just looks like it's something that's moving around the earth. The head looks fantastic, even though it's so tiny. There's a lot of nice fine texturing along the dinosaur's body. The little spikes along its back add an extra level of visual interest to the model. And again, that paint, I absolutely love, love, love this color scheme. This shade of turquoise blue, it's just so pretty. And then the super light blue underside sets the darker blue off very nicely. So I'm really happy with this piece. Uh, if you're a fan of sauropods or diplodocus or safari, you know, you, you got to add this to your collection. I, I totally am happy with what I have here in my possession. And uh, this is going to have a nice prominent spot on my display shelf because I really, really like it a lot. And uh, I'm really looking forward to buying more safari dinosaurs because these things are just top notch. Awesome. All right, my friends, if you've enjoyed this video, then do give us a like, do subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down below. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And as always, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Victoria's Cantina. Until next time, bye-bye.